Hansil Imtiaz writes on Instagram. How much do you as a GP or generally every GP remember the content from medical school? And I think most of the GPs watching these videos are thinking the exact same thing that I'm thinking. Nowadays, I just pretty much Google everything. But let's use this opportunity to talk about the techniques that I used to study and how I got through medical school without actually failing an exam. I did only pass my driver's license test on the third time though. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike. I'm a GP in Manchester, UK, and I'm also a university tutor at one of the medical schools nearby. And in this short video, I'm going to share with you my tried and tested study technique focused around three basic principles. Finally, if you stick around to the end, I will share with you my most controversial study tip. So let's get started. Principle number one is know your chronotype. If you read the amazing book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, you will be familiar with the terms lark and owl. Are you a morning person? Are you a night person? I am definitely a morning person. So that's when I plan my most labor intensive revision activities, like learning new material or new guidelines. If I have the day off, my mornings will typically be with a book, but if I'm commuting into work, I'll listen to an audiobook. Now, if only there was an amazing audiobook with crossed reference guidelines that would help you revise on the move. In the evenings though, I'm happy to practice cases and do some test questions online, for example. Principle number two is work and breaks. So Pomodoro is a great idea. You work for 25 minutes, then you have a five minute break and repeat. And that works quite well for a lot of people. Personally, my ratio is an hour and a half to 30 minutes. And I will typically do four of those sessions in a day. But what is really important here is to actually avoid doing what I would call fun things during your break. So no computer, no phone, not even Nintendo. You are pretty much so bored, but not studying, that you can't wait to get back to your next hour and a half of studying. Nonetheless, I feel that that period of inactivity, as it were, is crucial for your brain to recover. And principle number three, is sleep. Back in the day, there were these romantic notions that the only way a medical student could survive medical school was to work all day and then stay up all night studying. Now, I have never pulled an all-nighter and I've also never failed a medical school exam. And trust me, I'm no genius. Sleep is by far one of the most important things when it comes to consolidating knowledge and you need to make sure that you get plenty of it. In this video, I talked about the resources that I use as a GP to send to patients. One of my favorite ones is a one-pager that covers sleep hygiene. Now, if if you don't know these already, please go to the link in the description below and your mind, body and soul will thank you. Finally, I promised you a bonus at the end. Here is my most controversial study tip, especially among the student body. Don't drink alcohol, at least not before your exams. And I'm not worried here about you getting so drunk that you decide that you actually know how to do a kickflip down a flight of stairs and not even make it to your exams. It is the detrimental effect that alcohol, even in the smallest quantities, has on your sleep and therefore on the consolidating that we talked about before. If you have any Polish friends, ask them what zakui zdai zapi zapomni means. And that order is crucial. Right, that's it guys. If you'd like to see more videos like these, please subscribe. You can also email me directly. Otherwise, povodzenia!